What is up, everybody? Welcome into Pack a Day Live. Thank you so much for being here. I'm your host, Andy Herman. You can follow me on Twitter at Andy Herman NFL. I think at some point we may have a couple guests pop in here and there. I let a bunch of people know all of like five minutes ago that they could hop on if they want. So we'll see if we get a couple people in from time to time. We did just have some breaking news. This isn't what I was necessarily going to expect to talk about, but it sounds like Jamal Williams is a New Orleans Saint. So uh, Saints and former Lions and Packers running back Jamal Williams have agreed on a three-year deal. So Jamal Williams, officially a Saint, easier to swallow, I guess, than a NFC North team. Maybe not as ideal as an AFC team, but Jamal Williams, a member of the New Orleans Saints. That is clearly not what anyone here is uh, is here to talk about. We obviously want to talk about the huge, huge implications of what Aaron Rodgers talked about on the Pat McAfee show today. Full transparency, uh, I was at work all day. I had the opportunity to watch the entirety of Aaron Rodgers' interview. I just got home, gave the kids spaghetti, came downstairs, and I'm here right now to talk about it. Obviously, I'll be answering your questions as we go along here, uh, but I, I've got no notes. I've got no nothing. I just kind of want to talk about this entire situation just based on what has happened, what's transpired, and you know where we're sort of at moving forward with the Packers and the Jets and how this trade will likely transpire. So I'll start just by saying, Clearly, for any of those of you who have followed me during this entire time period, going back really to last offseason to now, you know that my hope is the wrong word, but I, I thought what was best for the Packers was if they ultimately traded Aaron Rodgers what, to some team, whether that be the Jets or other. I felt like that was what was ultimately in best interest of the Packers. That had nothing to do with being against Aaron Rodgers or any vitriol towards Aaron or anything like that. Um, he is one of the absolute all-time great football players. He is one of the absolute all-time great quarterbacks. He is one of the absolute all-time great Green Bay Packers. And, you know, arguably the best thrower of the football that I've ever seen. And there is no easy way to transition from that type of quarterback to anything else. It's not ideal. It's not easy. There's no perfect way to go about that. I have the utmost of respect. And I mean the utmost of respect for how Aaron carried the G as a member of the Green Bay Packers, how much it meant to him. And yeah, there were differences between him and Brian a couple of years ago, and maybe he could have gone about things a different way. But do you know what his intentions were when, you know, a, a couple of years ago when he, you know, kind of made a stink about everything? It was what he thought was best for the Green Bay Packers. He thought what he was doing was going to be for the betterment of the organization as a whole. He cared that much. And I think that's a really important distinction here that we sort of make moving forward is this is somebody who literally bled green and gold for a very long period of time who it mattered to him and a massive amount, right? So on top of that, obviously being a four-time MVP, a Super Bowl champion, like I said, one of the greatest throwers of the football of all time, he has, he's one of the best, like there's no two ways about it. So to see him go, and have to watch him on another team, there's no easy transition to that. There just isn't. So while I thought it was in the best interest of the Packers, in large part because of the contract that they signed a year ago, I think one of the things that I don't know that the Packers foresaw or that the uh, Aaron Rodgers and his agent foresaw when they signed that deal is that they basically put into motion a situation where Green Bay's best interest was to trade him this offseason. And it almost made it so that Maybe they didn't have to, but it, it it was very close to them having to trade Aaron Rodgers based on the salary cap repercussions. And yeah, if he had had another MVP season, they would have had a conversation about that. But this was an exorbitant cap hit that they would have had to swallow moving forward if he stayed on the team. And they quickly recognized that this was what was in the best interest of the Packers. If you missed the comments with Pat McAfee, and I'll obviously get to all of you and your questions in just a second here. It looks like we've got Justice Mosqueda hanging out in the queue. I'm going to bring on in just a moment as well. But you know, if you missed it, you know, Aaron said that he went into uh, you know kind of the offseason. He did mention later that he felt kind of all season long that maybe Green Bay was going to go in a different direction, which I feel is probably the case. And then he did mention that in their exit interview that he was very, that the Packers were open to him coming back, that it was sort of Aaron's decision. 
He goes into the darkness retreat. He mentioned that he was about 90% sure, 90% sure. So in nine out of 10 multiverses, Aaron Rodgers would have just ended up retired. We are in the multiverse where he did not retire. And he ultimately decided that when he came out of the um, darkness retreat, that he still had some interest in playing. And then he got indications as soon as he got out that some things had changed, that Green Bay was going in a different direction. He wanted to play and that it ultimately was probably going to have to be for the Jets. It seems a little bit like once he found out Green Bay maybe wasn't quite as interested uh, in his services anymore, that might have been a motivating factor, which isn't a bad thing and should become as a non-shock to anyone who knows how Aaron has operated throughout the course of his career. And now it seems very, well, not seems, he wants to be a member of the New York Jets. He wants to play football this season. He's going to be a member of the New York Jets. And the only thing left to figure out is compensation. So a lot, and I mean a lot to go over, an extremely heavy discussion because this is a massive monumental change for Aaron Rodgers, for the NFL, most importantly, maybe for the Green Bay Packers and the organization, for Jordan Love. So the trickle down from this is absolutely massive. And I know we want to know what the compensation is going to be and what's going to happen next. But I do want to bring on the one and only Justice Mosqueda. So Justice, as I sort of regather myself here and start you know, recombobulating everything, I want to just get your take on everything. What was your major takeaway from the Pat McAfee show and Aaron Rodgers tonight? Um... Well, first of all, can you hear me all right? Yeah, absolutely, man. Okay. Um, I think my biggest takeaway, just because, I mean, I don't know how a ton of Packers fans have felt. Like, I, I know a lot of people have just, like, tapped out of the whole Aaron Rodgers drama, right? And they're just like, let me know what happens it's when done, it happens. I, I'm out on this. But I, I kind of assumed all this stuff was going to play out the way it ended up playing out. I think my biggest takeaway is like, he seems genuinely hurt by by the way the Packers uh, handled this at the end. And I, I think, you know, based off of his words, you know, he kind of thought he had changed the culture in Green Bay in terms of how kind of cold the front office can be at times. And I mean, they're doing it to protect the franchise. It's not like they're making an owner more money or anything like that. It's They're, right. they're doing it it was in the interest of the ball club, but he thought he kind of like changed that a little bit. And then you see him talking and it's like the realization that it's like, Oh no, it was just two years. You won back-to-back -back MVPs. That's why they're willing to kind of, you know, say, say what you want, put it, put up, put up with, I, I don't know what type of verbiage we're going to use here. Um, I don't blame how anyone's acted. Like I think everyone's acting rationally. The, the one thing that, didn't really make sense to me other than Rogers can't figure out if it was four days and five nights or three days <laughs> and, and four nights uh, in the darkness retreat. He never really said why he changed his mind, right? He yeah. said he went into the darkness retreat and it was a 90% chance he was going to retire. And then he comes out and he hears the Packers are shopping him around. And then he's like, okay, I'm going to have to play elsewhere. W what happened in between there? That led you from going from basically, you know, on the doorstep of retirement to wanting to come back. I mean, I, I know a lot of people are like, well, the Packers, you know, they're, they're treating them wrong on the way out. The, the way I kind of see it, and I, it might be a little cutthroat, but like they were going to get nothing for him if he retired. And if they pissed him off enough that he wants to keep playing, now at least they're going to get draft picks. Like if, if there wasn't really it doesn't seem like there was ever really an opportunity for him to return other than between the time that he left the darkness retreat. And whenever he got those text messages from players around the league that he said, you know, let him know that he was being shopped around. Do you think there was a change at some point within the Packers organization? Do you think that they spoke you know, about it differently, but I don't know if it was before. Or after. So, um, and I agree with you, by the way. The the it it was the bye week, right? The it was late bye week, so I think it's this first week of December that the Packers had their bye week. They had the super late bye week uh, this season, and it was the first time Goot had gotten an opportunity to talk in front of the media since cutdowns or or the final roster, right? Right. Um, in September, and they were like, "Yeah, we're you know we're going to exercise Jordan Love's 
option basically. And then I believe after the season, he kind of walked that back a little bit. And it was like, maybe they were fully like at that point in the season, they start seeing things, you know, go down. Cause that was like right before the Cowboys game, I think where they started kind of surging where it was right after, um, you know, maybe they see the bad record and they're like, we're going to pull the plug on this thing. Aaron Rodgers goes on a run at the end of the year and they're more, it's more kind of up in the air. From everything I had heard, though, I went down to Indianapolis. I talked to a lot of people, um, some people who work for the Packers, some people who formerly worked with the Packers. It seemed like LaFleur was still pushing for Aaron. LaFleur still wanted him back. So I think that this is a little bit more of a probably front office decision than anything else. I don't think Mark Murphy is really getting that involved in, in these conversations. I think he leaves that to the front office. So I think this is kind of on uh, – Good to play. And I mean, he called the shot. Uh, he better be right. You, you better hope <laughs> Jordan Love is that guy. Cause if Jordan Love isn't that guy, all those, all those people that Aaron Rodgers listed, the 5,000 people that work for the Packers organization, he mentioned with the McAfee show, probably getting canned, right? Like that's kind of how this thing goes. It's, you you got to get the quarterback right. It is. It did feel very much like there was the press conference with Goody on the bye week and then right after the season. And that's where, and I think that this sort of matches up with what Aaron said to some extent as well. But, um, you know, he basically said, hey, this wasn't just a one year deal when we signed Aaron back. Um, and this was a like a, you know, a, a multi year commitment. And he said, like, those were sort of his, his phrases. And then but I did also get the, you know, I, I guess I, I did read it that he didn't have the same level of vigor that he did even when discussing uh, David Bakhtiari and some of the other players like, well, is Bakhtiari going to, absolutely David Bakhtiari is going to come back. Well, what about Aaron? We want all of our players back. Right. And I think when Aaron's talking about like, even during the season where he felt like when green Bay was basically saying, Hey, it's kind of your decision, what you want to do, you know, what he kind of got out of that, what I kind of got out of that was Green Bay wasn't like, hey, we, we got to have you back. We want you back. We really need you back. And I think he even said like nobody was standing on the table or like, you know, pounding the right. desk like, you know, we really want you. And of course, if they really wanted him back, if they wanted to make sure that there was no Aaron Rodgers going anywhere, they go out of their way to do that. So I think that was his reading the tea leaves, which is the same way I read it, that yeah, maybe Green Bay would have considered bringing him back, but they were sort of noncommittal. And there was always this feeling that I think they were just kind of hoping that he was going to get this way on his own. And then, as you mentioned, at the scouting combine, then the tone changed from Brian Gutekunst where, you know, he said, well, this has always been a year to year thing. It was no longer, hey, this is a this has been a, a longer term commitment. commitment. Just, yeah. always knew this was going to be year to year. And you could tell and it was obviously a, a huge change. And I know a lot of people came out of that, you know, Brian Gutekunst press conference would be like, oh, he's not he's not playing for Green Bay anymore. Like they've moved on. Well, they also in love. he also said. I believe that was the press conference where he said him and Rogers hadn't really talked even at that point. And, I mean, that's what two, two weeks ago, I want to yeah. say he was like, we hadn't really talked outside of a couple text exchanges and stuff like that. I, I do wonder, uh, I mean, it does seem to a certain extent, like a little bit of a communication issue. Right. So like, obviously uh, when are things optional? Right. I mean, this is like not even a football question. This is like a life question. Right. Like, have you ever had someone like overstay a welcome or take something too granted or something like that? Like he's not showing up to OTAs when he's got all these rookie wide receivers. Right. That's something. There's a, yeah, that's, it's something. It's optional. It's optional. We can't make you do it. Right. They tell you, hey, take as much time as you can. But then you have no conversation with the general manager for the better part of two months. And then you're like, I can't believe he made a decision without me, right? It's like, I don't know. So sometimes you you take things a little too far. I'm sure if you wanted to be a Packer, there would have been ways that you probably could have shown it um, before this point. But I don't know. It seems I, like he's he's made peace with playing for the Jets and, and stuff like that. So I guess we'll find out. I almost wonder if Green Bay just kind of thought the entire time, just based on, you know, him keeping his jersey, walking out with Cobb, you know, kind of his actions throughout the season, that they kind of just thought he was going to retire, that they didn't actually think he was going to come back. So they didn't, they did, they're just like, yeah, they wanted to sort of not be the bad guys and just be well, like, that was the whole McGinn thing and all that stuff, right? They were like, the, the, the one thing that they don't want 
is for him to come back and be like, I want to be a Green Bay Packer. That was yeah. all the reporting right before, you know, it became pretty evident that it was down to retirement or the Jets, right? Yeah, I think so. And I think if they got the inkling that, he, all right, he's just going to retire. Well, we don't have to have that difficult conversation and be like, we don't want you anymore. He's just yeah. going to retire on his own and this will all sort of clean itself up. And then I almost wonder if during the darkness retreat, they started getting a feeling of like, oh, he wants to play. And this is this could potentially now be an issue. But how, then, how would they have gotten it? Because he said going into it. I know. 90, I know. They read the vibrations. You think the, the universe? The universe sent out a signal, signal to go <laughs> clearly is what I think. I think we can all agree what happened in this situation. Um, but yeah, let, let me let me rewind here. So obviously we've got a lot to dig into from a McAfee standpoint. But I think the overarching takeaway from this is Aaron Rodgers is a freaking New York Jet. And not technically yet, but it's going to happen. Your thoughts on Aaron's career, what he's meant to the franchise, because this is obviously a monumental culture shift for Green Bay going from Aaron Rodgers to, to Jordan Love. Um, from the Packers perspective, right? I think I already kind of touched it. It's true. Hey man, Love, you gotta get it right. Like you 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 better bet. And I don't people ask me what my thoughts on Love are. I cut up all of Love's throws. I put it on the all twenty two and stuff like that on my Twitter. He's got like 60 passes in his NFL career. Yeah. You you can't make a judgment off of that. Like there this is one of the instances where it's like, yeah, the coaching staff in the front office, like they know way more than we even have access to. Right. Just by seeing him in practice. So that's a tough one for me. Um, as far as his fit with the Jets, I think it's really interesting because it's like. So he's still going to be touch and go year to year. Right. Oh, for I would sure. Assume. So. I would think so. I don't know how big of a commitment can they make. Like it was almost easier in Green Bay where you already have, you know, his proverbial friends, right? Like that's how it gets branded. It's like Cobb's his buddy, Lazard's his buddy. They want to get together. The band's back, right? Like it, he already had that in Green Bay. So like what type of commitment can you build around that with the Jets? And, you know, one benefit he's had in Green Bay too, and I know there's been a lot of shuffling on the offensive line and stuff, but, He's had pretty good pass protection, you know, with the Packers for the majority, vast majority of his career. I know he's had some like center issues and stuff like that, but the Packers are one of the best teams about getting pass blockers out there and, you know, having depth on the offensive line. We've seen, I, I think the one place that you could see him actually decline outside of like, you know, the couple of games that he was like clearly battling his, his thumb injury and stuff right. like that was his legs. So his legs are going down you better be able to protect it. So I, and again, uh, what was it? Uh, yesterday there was a report that he was out there recruiting offensive some offensive line. linemen. It seemed like it's Jake Brendel from what I yeah, could I can gather. Uh, the, the, he's an interior guy for uh, the 49ers. Um, but yeah, I mean, that's, that's going to be the biggest one to me. I think it's like build a solid offensive line around him and see what you can do. The other thing is, Miami's loading up. I mean, they just added Jalen Ramsey, right? Like they got, they just paid a backup quarterback like $10 million to make sure that they can make it to, to the playoffs. Unlike this past year um, where, where they faltered at the end uh, in the wild card round. And then you have the Buffalo bills. So it's like, there's a chance, like they do all this for one year and they still finish like third in the AFC East. Like maybe they make the playoffs, but like, it, it's like the, uh, AFC West last year, right? Where we're like, someone got Devontae, brutal, someone yeah. got Russell Wilson. Oh, Justin Herbert. Oh, Patrick Mahomes. Someone's finishing fourth, and they're gonna feel like complete jerks. Yeah, the AFC, is, the AFC as a whole. I mean that that entire conference, right? And that's why I'm saying, like, for the Jets, the, as a GM of the Jets, as Joe Douglas, you have to assume, like maybe Rogers plays for more than one year. Certainly, that's within the realm of possibility. But you legitimately have to go into that trade being like, this could just be one year. And if you're the Jets, like going all in for this one year, and yes, I guess they I, they don't have a ton of other options at this point. But like, man, you're going all in in a year where you've got a pretty stacked division. Like, if on paper, maybe the worst team is the Bill Belichick run New England Patriots, who yes, haven't been as great lately. But that's if that's the worst team in your division, that's still a, a pretty high bar. Around five hundred as a floor. Yeah, right? probably right. 
And then in the, in the AFC North, probably still Lamar Jackson, Joe Burrow. Uh, we'll see what happens with Lamar, obviously. And then you've still got Herbert. You've still got Mahomes. Like th- this is a crazy freaking conference. The Jaguars could potentially take another step. Like there, I'm actually, I know a lot of people are like just so dead set on, and we'll talk about compensation here in just a second of like what Green Bay is going to get. And I like, we really need pick 13, but like, Next year's first is actually semi interesting. Where like you are a potential Aaron Rodgers like thumb or ankle or knee or something away from that team being like maybe very bad, like maybe very Denver Broncos ish from last year. I was surprised how little cap space they had because I know they have talent, but a lot of it's young talent, right? Right. I didn't realize that they were in such a cap situation that like you know, Aaron Rodgers, like $20 million cap hit or whatever it's going to be after the trade. Like they needed to move things around to even make room for that. Um, the counterpoint I have on the Jets, though, Robert Salah. Do you guess his record uh, with the Jets right now? I would two assume years. it's been how many? Two years? Two years. Two years. It was what, like a couple games where like a game below 500 last year. I don't remember the year before that. I would assume... I don't know, maybe like maybe 500, 11 and 23. Oh, geez. So you have people talking about, you know, it's one year, it's one year, it's one year. Right. And we we talk about it this way with athletes where you're like, once you're in that position, you have to maximize your value on that second contract. Right. And stuff like that. It's the same thing. Like once you get a head coaching job, like once you get a head coaching job, you hold on to it as tightly as you need to. So if you're like on the proverbial hot seat, right? Him and Joe Douglas, because yeah. you you flunked the draft pick of Zach Wilson, like doing this Aaron Rodgers trade could be the difference between you being a defensive coordinator next year or you getting an extension as a head coach. And yeah, that's and, um, millions and millions and that's literally tens of millions of dollars of difference. Like you're completely changing your career net worth, right? So like that's where I start looking at, like, this move only makes sense for the Jets because of the desperation, right? Everyone I'm, else would look at, I mean, heck, Lamar Jackson's on the market right now as we speak. You can give up two first-round picks and give an offer sheet to Lamar Jackson. Like, it would make more sense long-term to make a move like that than trade a first-plus whatever for, for Aaron Rodgers. So, I'm glad you brought that up. I will readily admit that one of my weak spots – more often than not is that I, in the back of my mind, consistently expect every, all 32 NFL franchises to operate like a sound of mind franchise. That's doing what's in in the best interests of their specific franchise. And that is actually more rarely the case than not. Like almost every team in some capacity is doing things to either save their job or because the owner's meddling in things like there are very, very few franchises that are actually operating in the right way that they probably should be. So I forget that that desperation from keeping jobs and general, may- not forget, but it just, I, I, I don't know. It just doesn't trigger with me sometimes, but you bring up that desperation point, right? Which clearly becomes a precursor to the compensation discussion, which everyone wants to get into. And everyone has very differing viewpoints as to what compensation is going to be for Aaron Rodgers. I'll just, I'll let you take the floor, your gut feel as to what you think Green Bay gets in return or what this trade could potentially look like. Um, If you would have asked me 24 hours ago, I probably would have said a second and then some adjustable uh, draft pick for 2024. So, you know, this, this year's second from the jets and then a 2024 pick that would, Uh, You could do weird things with it, right? Like you could say like, hey, if you make the playoffs, it goes from a fourth to a third. If you win a Super Bowl, it becomes another second, right? Or if he comes back, then it becomes a first, right? You could do things like that. So it's like based off – there's conditions tied to it. I would have said something like that probably 24 hours ago. And then you get the Sheffield report. They're looking for two first-round picks. Then you get the Pelissero stuff where it's like they're not looking for that exactly, but, you know, they still need – compensation is what's holding this whole thing up. And then you you get Aaron Rodgers just flat out saying, like, the ball's in the Packers' court. They're playing – you know, they're they're digging their heels on draft compensation. So I, I would assume if – because if it's a second-round pick, you're just like, screw it, we'll get it done. Like, so, for example, right, last year, 
and every everyone just it uh talked about it this past weekend because uh or this past week because Darren Waller got traded. Thanks for confirming the reports that we had a year ago. Um right. Darren Darren Waller was originally part of the trade for Devontae Adams. It was supposed to be a first in Darren Waller. Um there's a and there's a league rule where a player on a franchise tag can't be traded for another player if that player hadn't signed. So Devontae hadn't signed his franchise tag, right? So the Packers send it into the league. They send it back, and they're like, hey, guys, this trade actually can't go through. The Raiders and the Packers argue, and they're like, well, would Waller have been a third-round pick or a second-round pick? At some point, the Raiders just end up saying, screw it, send the second-round pick, right? Like, we're going to get Devontae Adams. If it was screw it, send the second-round pick, I think Aaron Rodgers is a Jet right now. Right. So I think there has to be a first-round pick involved. Based off of the reporting, I'd be surprised if there were two um, – because even when Schefter talked about it, it was almost in the past tense, right? Like the yeah. Packers are looking for two second round picks, so or two first round picks. So I think it's probably a first, and then probably I think you still want the twenty twenty four to be some sort of conditional. Because I think you want to protect yourself, where you're like, if Rodgers does come back, I would sure want more compensation, especially if he's playing at a rate of like sixty million dollars per year, and you're willing to pay that. I think that's the, the conditional thing is really, really interesting. I, I do, I am more leaning towards like, I don't know. I go back and forth. Like I, I think a second and a conditional is what maybe seeing, maybe they're just working on the conditions of that pick. I would um, already set the pick. If, if those were the terms, I probably would, I would have done it already. Like shouts if to you were both or if you were in who's. Uh, I mean, I don't know if I would make the trade if I were the jets to be totally honest, Fair but enough. it, if, if you're Green Bay, you're saying. Yeah, if I were Green I would have blinked already. Right? Like I, Goots, I'm with you. Goots, diamond hands holding strong. I'm get I'm getting more draft value out of you. I probably would have blinked. So so more power to him. But yeah, if it were a, anything like a second and a third, you're trading a, you're trading away a guy who's making 60 million dollars this year. I totally Darius Slay just got released. Right? Like Jalen that Ramsey guy can still went, play Jalen football. Ramsey went for a third. Yeah, exactly. So like it, it's not all about the player, it's about the contract too. And Rogers contract is weird in that you're paying for it in the future. Like I don't even know if the Jets want to do that, but they also don't necessarily have the cap space short term to just say, like, yeah, we're just gonna assume that sixty million dollar cap hit right now. So do you think that I want to come back to this in a second? Do you think any of the Packers dragging their feet? Do you think there's any chance that Aaron asked for a player to go along with? Like, is there a potential player that the Jets would want too? that Aaron's like, I got to get this guy too. And that's what Green Bay would potentially be dragging their feet on. How do we, what is this? 69? <laughs> yeah. is, that, is that how we would do it? Is- um, I think it would have been Bakhtiari, but once they did the salary conversion, that's out of the window, right? Completely I mean, out. They could do so- it June first, but they can't do it before then. I mean, there's not even that many movable. Like the way the Packers have just pushed everything forward and maximized their cap space this year, just to kind of like keep what's left of this team kind of together moving forward, so that like the draft picks can fill out the rest of the roster. Like, there's not that many. Like, what can you do? You could trade Darnell Savage. You could trade Rashawn Gary. And is that it? That might be yeah, it. Not- there's not much. Yeah. It, 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 Everything else puts you above the cap once you get to the, the 53, and then you get into tricky spots where you're – you would basically have to, like, cut guys making, like, a million and a half and then backfill it with, like, UDFA. So if that was the decision, it should have been made way earlier. Like, it's just not feasible at this point. It would just be great if, like, it came out, like – the. Aaron just demanded that Bo Melton came with him and the Packers were just like, Nope, we're not, we can't do it. We can't send Bo Melton along. Um, yeah. There's not many people that make sense. Like you could argue like maybe like a John Runyon jr. Or something like that could be probably shipped, but like that's one. Yeah. That's one. But even then you're it's, not, you're not, yeah, you're not I mean, fighting over it. And I don't think the jets are making a big stink over it at that point. So now I'm with you. Bakhtiari would have been the one that would have been in the conversation. And based on the restructure, you literally the green Bay literally can't do it prior to June 1st. So yeah, yeah there's just not much they can do there. Speaking of teammates, if you're Bobby Tunyon, oh, how are you feeling? Bobby. You didn't Poor make Bobby. the wish list. 
You didn't make the wish list. Everyone well, else was, got on there. There was no wish list, though, Justice. There was no oh. wish list, even though they're they're signing all the guys off of said wish list. Rusini was... is doubling, tripling down on ESPN as we speak about the wish list. Amazing. I, I'm sure there's probably some middle ground where the Jets asked for some players that he thought would work well within that offense and with Aaron. And I'm sure like it was probably via text or email, right? Where he sends a list of players yeah. that, you know, basically responding to the question that was in the first place. And that goes from like what Aaron is just being like, Hey, I just told them the players that I thought would work well and that I like to play with and things like that. And, and then it's also, it's, but it's viewed as like, though, this is Aaron's wish list of players. And I'm, I'm sure there's like always, there's probably some truth in the middle. I, I think the problem and this seems to be the problem a lot of times with Aaron is it goes from we're reporting this like wish list. This is, you know, guys that he has input on and he takes that as, oh, you said those were demands. Right. Like, no, Aaron, no one said those were demands. No, no one is mad at you because you want Randall Cobb. We already knew you wanted Randall Cobb. <laughs> Alan Lazard already made sense with the Jets like Hackett's there, of course. But it's it's totally fine. Aaron. It's totally yeah. fine. Uh, um, going back to, to trade comp for just a second, like I, like I said, I, th I think a, a second round plus maybe some, some sort of comp. If, I think if they do get 13 out of this in just even 13, win, win. I think Goody did just tremendous, tremendous, yeah. tremendous work uh, of getting that in return. And like you said, had Aaron retired out of this, they get nothing. And I want to, this is pivoting for a second here, but I do want to say that I know maybe that some people will say like Aaron doesn't deserve credit for this or something like that, but there was a real chance for a power play here by Aaron. If you want, like Green Bay couldn't trade him without Aaron saying he wanted to be traded because no team was going to trade for him and take on that, the, the responsibility of that contract, unless they knew he was going to play. So if he told every team, if he told the jets, if you trade for me, I'm retiring the jets immediately pivot and go in some other direction and say, we're, we're out. Right. So if he says, I'm not going to any other team, there's nothing that Green Bay can really do about it. If he says, I'm not retiring, there's nothing that Green Bay can really do about it. And Green Bay was in a situation with this contract where they literally could not cut him. Now, right. Green right. Bay had a power play as well in to say, you want to come back? And this is where I think the McGinn thing, I know that everyone like made a huge stink about it, Where, but like we're... But, but Green Bay's only power play if that in that situation, if Aaron literally pulled like basically a Brett in this situation and said, no, I'm going to be a Green Bay Packer. I'm not retiring and I'm not going anywhere else. If, if they would have said that, if he would have said that, the only power play Green Bay has left is to say, all right, you're Jordan's backup. And Aaron could have theoretically called their bluff and said, OK, you want me, Aaron Rodgers, in that locker room to like, well, this is all, well, Jordan's trying to go out there and you know that I'm probably better than what Jordan is, but you're going to stick to Jordan anyway. Like that's your ultimate decision. Like that's what you think is best for the pack. Like this could have got so insanely ugly, so insanely fast. And I didn't ever think it would honestly get to that point. And I'm so happy it didn't get to that point, but I at least think it's worth a footnote in the conversation to be like, if Aaron wanted to go nuclear in this situation, he absolutely could have gone nuclear and it would have gotten probably extremely ugly. Yeah. So for the people out there who don't follow the contract details super specifically, basically Rogers' options are already fully guaranteed, right? So if the Packers be on, on top of what is it like a $40 million cap hit, for the uh the money that is he was, he's already been paid but was like pushed forward in terms of the accounting right the dead yep. cap um there's 40 million dollars you would then have to pay the option on top of that which is right? 60 so, now. <laughs> yeah so it would it would have been i think it was somewhere in the in the range of like 90 million dollar like 99 dead cap million yeah to release Aaron Rodgers like just not feasible i mean i guess and this is the point that i i i've maybe leaned into this too hard, but like the other thing that you could do is Aaron, you don't want to retire. Okay. You're still an active NFL player. Well, like, let's trade you to the Carolina Panthers for a conditional draft pick. If you play, we get it. If not, we don't, you're off our books. If you unretire, you're going to be in Carolina. Like that's, that's something you can do, but I think that's like, that's worst case scenario. That's like if if this thing goes down to week like near week one of the regular season, and I don't think it's going to. No, that's like the like 
parachute where it's like, all right, get out of this contract, like rip it. And and I know right before we came on, uh, uh, Rob Domovsky had uh, posted, uh, he was just on a hit on ESPN and basically saying like, this is going to get done. It doesn't seem like it's like that big of an, you know, anything to overcome at this point. So there is a legitimate, I think, hope and belief that this will hopefully get done sooner rather than later. Like, I don't think it behooves anyone at this point to drag this out too long. It's bad for Aaron. It's bad for the Jets. It's bad. For, it, it's at minimum, at least not ideal for the Packers to continue to string this along. So I think well, it's in, not in some, good for the Packers because what there's five quarterbacks in this draft class, four quarterbacks. I can't remember. Um, right. Well, four it, top guys. Yeah. And then yeah, I mean, it depends what you think of hooker. Yeah. It's not good to get the uh, Jets as gears rolling right thinking, you're thinking yeah. about Aaron Rodgers keep thinking about Aaron Rodgers keep thinking about Aaron Rodgers because if I mean if they go what are the options you have I mean you go back to I mean the, the Raiders you know that was the other team that he basically mentioned in the uh the McAfee hit so um they were they were already added uh Jimmy Garoppolo so who, who knows if they would even be in the mix again Carolina was the other team that was reported right they've made a phone call about Aaron Rodgers, and now they've moved up to the first overall draft pick. So they're obviously going to take one. So, um, yeah, becomes really tricky. I, I, I think if you're looking at hard deadlines, like there's a couple things that could change. So basically, if the Packers are holding steady, right, if they're digging their heels like Aaron Rodgers said, it's basically just a waiting game on seeing when the Jets are going to blink, right? The only things that change between now – and the regular season, right? We have the draft. So that's when, you know, draft compensation would go from 2023 picks to 2024. And you have no idea where those are going to go, right? There's no promise in 2024. It's going to be the 13th overall pick, right? Um, plus you have to wait another year. Then you have June 1st, which then is, you know, we'll split his cap hit if he ends up getting traded and split that dead cap. And then the last thing would be week one, which is when his uh, bonus needs to be exercised or not. So, those are kind of the timelines. I know they're like pretty far out. I mean, the nearest one is what in like six weeks is the draft. So yeah, I don't know. I'm, We're just waiting for the Jets to blink at this point, I guess. I hate to uh, cut us off from a very in-depth Aaron Rodgers conversation, but we have some breaking news justice. The Packers per Mike Garofolo have agreed to terms with long snapper, Matt Ozrich, 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 something like that. Formerly of the Rams, Ozrich, wins a ring in LA and heads to green Bay on a three year deal. Justice, the Packers as a, uh, what all pro long napper. I'm sure you have some long snapper takes. What do you have any takes? Do you have any film on Matt Osrich? I'll, I'll figure out something for the site, but I can't even spell this guy's name. Are you kidding me? Oh, or Zach or O R Z E C H. Oh my goodness. Um, I, I, I don't know. That much, I mean, I would assume, I mean, this is kind of funny because it's always like everyone always makes fun of LaFleur for keep signing guys off of that McVay tree <laughs> as coaches, but now he's doing it with players. Um, you know, obviously, Rich Passaccio probably has some input there. Um, but they, they, the long snapper from not this past year, Jack Coco, right? He, he was a guy that they brought up uh, yep. through tryouts and stuff. But the year before, the long snapper for the Bajorquez year had come from the Rams, too if I remember correctly. Oh, I, I, I forget who, I already forget who the guy was after Hunter Bradley, the guy who allowed the block, well, helped allow the block yeah. punt in the, yeah, we yeah. don't talk about that. So I think that he lost the camp battle to this Osrich guy. So. Gotcha. I don't know. Seems like he's Steven been in Wordle. the league yeah, for, we go. for a while. Steven Wordle. But yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, nice to see that they actually address, like, I think Rich Passaccia has the most pull in the building now when it comes to free agents. Like the He got the assistant is, head coach uh, title yeah, yeah, added to him. Matt LaFleur, look over your shoulder, man. Uh, he, was the, he was the only guy they brought back, basically, is Keyshawn Nixon, returner slash special teams guy, their first free agent sign. How, well, how, how dare you? Tyler Davis got resigned. Oh, that's right. That's right. Well, I he guess technically he's a special, special teamer. Teams. Yeah, that's fair. That's fair. Uh, that's amazing. Um, although he might be tight end one by default also right now. So, um, but uh, yeah, I, I do like that they continue to address. But how just how picture perfect is it that on the day that we find out Aaron Rodgers is traded to the New York Jets, that the biggest for like their first foray into free agency for the Green Bay Packers is a long snapper. That's just beyond poetic and perfect. I think. 
How many have we lost? Oh, no, we're still in comp pick range because we're minus yeah. one now because Jaron Reed and Alan Lazard. I always forget that. That's one part that I always forget is that it's not just about the contracts. It's also like the volume of players yep. in and out. I just saw Bills fans going nuts because apparently they're – they signed a they signed a returner themselves, Hardy from the Saints, and that might end up costing them the third round pick that uh, they would lose for Tremaine Edmonds, and they're all going nuts. So my gears started going. I'm like, wait, do we still get the fourth or fifth the round Jaron pick Reed. for for, yeah. for Lazard? And I forgot about Jaron Reed signing with the Seahawks, which the power to him. Good job for keep finding work. I don't know how you're doing it, but. So let's transition to uh, away from long snapper, uh, but let's transition to what's next for Green Bay. Obviously, we know Jordan loves the quarterback. You don't really have a, you know, an established backup quarterback. So they're probably going to need to do something there, probably need, you know, via the draft. But as just like a sort of philosophical standpoint for the next couple of years here, as Jordan loves your quarterback, they don't really have money to spend in free agency. They can get a long snapper here and there and they can do a couple of things uh, to, to improve the roster. But um, what, what's your sort of philosophy on what Green Bay should be looking to do over the next couple of seasons? Oh, man. That, I mean, just keep adding talent. I mean, I, I think they have a good core. I think you can keep guys like, you know, Jair, Rashawn Gary, um, Kenny Clark. Like, those guys are going to be staples. I think the offensive line right now is really set. I know, I know people look at, like, Bakhtiari's expiring contract, not this upcoming season, but the one after it, right? Um but they have like 12 offensive linemen under contract that they like rostered on their 53 the entire year. I I, I think you just want to get better at the skill positions, right? And just keep drafting well. I know I know that sounds dumb, but like o- avoid some of these bad fifth year options. Don't Darnell Savage again. And uh hopefully the arrow is just trending up on guys like Wyatt and Quay Walker. I, I totally agree. I think it's about just acquiring young talent that is going to continue to appreciate. I don't think that this is like a full rebuild situation where they have to tear anything down or trade guys away. Let me, let me follow up with this as well. NFC North right now, who has the best, and I'm not saying the best team, all right, but who has the best like young-ish core of a roster? Because I look at Green Bay, right? And obviously Jordan Love, is a huge mystery box that we just don't know yet. But like Jordan Love, who knows what the long term is on AJ Dillon, but they're probably going to draft a running back anyway. But Christian Watson, Romeo Dobbs, Zach Tom, you know, John Runyon Jr. We'll see what else they do along the offensive line. But you're Rashawn Gary's a core guy. You've got Wyatt, you've got Clark, you've got Slayton, you've got Quay, you've got Jair, you've got Stokes. Like that's not a bad core to start off with this like and i know like the bears and the lions have got like some of these young up-and-coming players but when you talk about like top tier talent that's still at least like in or near the prime of their career like kenny rashawn um obviously we'll see what happens with christian watson and just how good he can get jire alexander like there is a elton jenkins i didn't even think i mentioned him the first time like there is a really strong core to this team still yeah no i agree i mean we'll have to see how I mean, the Bears are get, about to get a bunch of draft picks, right? They so the, 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 they got to they got to find guys too. Like it yes. doesn't necessarily equate into something. It right. should. I love what they're doing. If you're not from a Packers standpoint, but like from a just team building standpoint, they're doing a lot of things the right way. Right. So we got to see how the Bears picks pan out, and then just see if Justin Fields can take that extra step. Right. I, I mean, I think we're we're seeing the arrow trend up, but he's not you know, in his final form yet. It, it reminds me a lot of like Jalen Hurts, right? Like Jalen Hurts, what was it last year? Had the playoff game and just completely got smothered by the Buccaneers and you saw him take the next step and he's dang near an MVP candidate. I think that's yeah. the worry for Packers fans with, with Justin Fields. Um, and then you got the draft picks. Yeah, I, I don't, I mean, Minnesota, everyone says they're GM smart. I'm still waiting to see it. Um, I agree. And then I the Lions, I like Jameson Williams, but you got him on a discount because he was injured. Outside of that, like, I know the, the like the pass rusher from Jackson State was a nice find and stuff like that, but I don't see too many game breakers. Even Hutchinson was a little disappointing for me relative to expectations coming in this year. So, yeah, the top end talent in the division. Yeah, I mean, it's like, you know, you still have Justin Jefferson in Minnesota. I really like Christian Darisaw. Yeah, he's it's about like- to get paid. Yeah, he is about to get paid big time. Excited, too. excited for that and Kirk, money yeah. management. Let's go. 
They're in no man's land, man. The Vikings are in no man's land. They're in a really weird spot. I'm I'm very happy as a Let's Packer go. fan for the Vikings. Pr- is Princeton hey. economist figure it out? Is uh is Chris or uh, is uh is Kurt getting guaranteed money too? Like please, please God, let him get a five year that. fully guaranteed money and let let us let us have that man into the, the division for the next five years as our young prince Jordan Love flourishes to the top of the division once well, again. This week they just pushed his money forward, right? They they salary yep. converted him, so now he's gonna have a dead cap hit moving forward and even more leverage and contract negotiations to get that number down and get an extension. Jacob, is that a celebratory the saga is over drink or what what do we got there? <laughs> is the saga over? Is it no, over? <laughs> <laughs> What's what other what other weird, you know, the, the funny thing about all this is everybody's been making the same jokes all week, right? Like Air Rodgers down to this last second. What other weird things are going to happen? Like, what's the weirdest way this can end? And so far, it's all been pretty, like, amicable, right? I mean, yeah. give, tw- give 12 credit. I thought, you know, you're, people are going to give him a hard time and, and whatever. I thought he was really good today, it, it, you know, for the most part with what he said. You know, gave his flowers to the city of Green Bay, to Packers fans. Oh, no. Very, very specifically did not mention two names. I don't think he said Matt LaFleur's name, and I don't think he said Brian Gutenkunt's name, which is funny because he talked about Sam Seal being a scout on that staff. You know, the staff is different. Nobody is there anymore from, from back then. Uh, Goody's been there since 1998. <laughs> so uh, he was there. He was there as a scout when they drafted Aaron Rodgers. So I thought that was a very notable omission from his uh, from his speech that he gave today and you know honestly I, can you fault the guy i mean he got he just got fired right he just got fired right. you give you give the credit to you know all the people that you love all your coworkers, the people that you did it for and you kind of want to say hey boss screw off right i mean i don't blame him for wanting to be that way and i don't blame packers fans who you know there's a there's a, a major not a majority but there is a a faction of Packers fans that are very much like, how could you do this? How could you do this to our guy? Um, so it's it's going to be interesting. And I think, you know, going back to the celebratory drink, Andy, this is just the beginning. Like, we're just getting started, man. We are just getting started. So it should be fun. Yeah. Welcome, Jacob Morley, by the way. Uh, Jake, great to have you. Um, always love hearing your thoughts on things. I just want to get your reaction to today in general. Like I, I want to give you the, the floor and the opportunity just to kind of go what's going through your head right now. It's weird. It's, it's a really weird feeling to, I mean, I went through, you know, if you're old enough to remember the 2005 draft, everyone kind of knows it's one of those things. Like I, I remember where I was at when I actually made the pick and I, I shared it today. I was, I was a a young man working at Dairy Queen in Valley City, North Dakota. And my dad called me because he had been calling me for, you know, updates on this stuff. And, and what's up, Dusty? And he he calls me, he kept calling me. He's like, Hey, that, that quarterback from Cal that you liked is no one's taking him. And I'm just kind of, Oh, that's weird. Well, keep calling me because that would be cool. Like I was, I was on board before they even took him. I was like, that'd be kind of cool if they took him. Um, And so he calls me and he, and he just goes, they took him hangs up the phone and I was just like, Oh my God, like he fell all the way down. And, you know, it's interesting just because Favre, I'm not, I'm not old enough to remember Favre in 1992. I was three years old, you know, when he got traded to the Packers. So Aaron Rodgers is very much like my quarterback, the guy that I got to see come in as a kid. You know, he's not that much older than me and kind of grow, you know, not grow up with him, but watch him basically grow up in green Bay. And so it is, you know, everything that's happened the last few years that have kind of, I don't want to say soiled his legacy, because I don't think that's how we'll remember him in Green Bay his last couple of years where all the, you know, the controversial stuff and, and whatever, like all that beside, like he is, he is, I think when he said today, I'm arguably the greatest Packer of all time or whatever he said, like he's right. He is. And I think he deserves all of his flowers. Um, I think he will get those. And I think when he comes back five, eight, 10, whatever it is, you know, he's going to get the recognition that he deserves from Packers fans. You know, hopefully as Packers fans, we get to do this again with Jordan Love. And I don't think it's any secret that I'm a big Jordan Love guy. I, I believe in his talent. I think he has had three years to mature in this system. Um, 
I going back to him at Utah State, Andy, I remember talking to you about this three years ago when they took him. Like he he's got stuff on tape that you love. He's got stuff on tape that you don't love. But he, there's just something about it. There is something about him that just makes you excited. He's got that factor, that it factor, whatever it is. Um, and is it quantifiable? No, it's not. This could blow up in their faces. And if it does, guess what? They're all getting fired. And, and and that's fair. That's just the business. That's how it goes. But I believe I believe in the kid. And I, I have. And just, you know, the Philly game this last year is just kind of what you thought he was and what you think he can be. Now, can he do that for a 17 game season? We're about we're fixing to find out. Right. So um, I think it's just going to be really interesting. And, and I'm ready for that that jolt. And as a fan, and, and I got I got to go soon because I'm actually recording with Dorf here at seven. But I'll say this. As a fan, there was no period of time that I thought was more fun being a Green Bay Packer fan than when Aaron Rodgers finally surpassed Brett Favre in those those Vikings games where he came back to Lambeau. You know, the Desmond Bishop pick six, uh, the 2010 run that they made going to the Super Bowl was so much fun because it was so – you know, in your face to all the to all the haters and the non-believers, the people that didn't believe in Aaron Rodgers. And he had, you know, in 2010, he announced loudly to the world that the Packers made the right decision. And will we get that again with Jordan Love? I don't know. I, I believe in the kid's talent. Like I said, I have no idea if we're going to get that again. Odds would say we're not, right? Odds would absolutely say this isn't going to happen the third time in a row. And And the other fun thing about that, it doesn't need to for the Packers to win Super Bowls. Yeah. You know, it, Jordan Love doesn't need to be Aaron Rodgers for them to be a Super Bowl contending team. He needs to be good. He needs to be like a top 10, top 8 quarterback in the NFL. But I think he's got all the talent in the world. I think he can do it. Um, but, yeah, I, I appreciate you guys having me on. Uh, enjoy enjoy the rest of your guys' time together. I'm going to sign off. And if you guys, if anyone wants to come hang out, if anyone wants to come hang out over at the Gold Zone at Game on Wisconsin, Weston Dorf and I are getting started at seven. We're going to be doing the same thing. So appreciate you <laughs> appreciate guys. You, Talk to you later. Love the plug. Before I get to Dusty, just real quick, I was uh, I was eight years old in '92 uh, when uh, Brett Favre. I was at the game where Mikowski got injured and Favre came in through the touchdown to Kittrick Taylor. And my first, my first glorious of many horrible takes throughout my life is I was extremely upset because I knew that deep down Ty Detmer was going to be the better quarterback than Brett Favre and uh, that they should have been bringing in clearly Ty Detmer instead of Brett Favre at age eight. And I, uh, I stood by it and uh, yeah, it didn't work out so great, but uh, you know, for Favre, it worked out. Okay. I guess, but Dusty, welcome in. How the heck are you doing, hey, man? I'm good. I'm still waiting for the Brian Brown breakout. Are we still, are we, we're still rolling with that, right? Like that's, <laughs> same stuff. He couldn't yeah. even beat up Matt Flynn. Uh, which is the best part of that. Yeah, like immediately. No, good, man. Too. It's been a, been a fun day, been a weird day, you know. What was your just overarching feel when you I'm sure you watched it or at least got to listen to it later? Like so, as this entire thing unfolded, uh, I think a lot of us probably expected something like this, but it, as it becomes more of a reality, what were you thinking? Yeah, so I didn't get a chance to watch it. I I was just big clips. Um I I went and had lunch with my son over at uh, over at uh, preschool today, and then I've just been working, and so I've caught like clips here and there, and I I just like hitting up people fill me in what happened but the, the group chat really came through uh thankfully my, my brothers really cut me up to date there but yeah i mean I, well he announced was it yesterday there's the mcafee like the world needs to hear this whatever it was like this could be anything like i i have no idea what this could be and i i mean i've been thinking you know, like everyone else he's going to jets and you hear that like he might retire he might be buying a commune in Oregon and like, we'll never hear from him again. Like I have no idea what this is going to be. So not shocking at all. Um, and it is certainly something that, you know, we've all prepared for, but it is, it is different that <laughs> agreed. Uh, yeah. I mean, it is different now that it's, it's a reality. And I think that's, I mean, part of it is it's a, it's an exhale because it's, all right, we, we know what we're looking forward to here. We know, we, we likely know what the next couple of years, potentially going to look like we at least know we're going to get a look at Jordan Love. You kind of know all that stuff plays out. And there's at least like some sense of closure there. And then there is, there's excitement for the future. Well, also, yeah, a lot of kind of backward looking and, you know, he's, I, 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 I tweeted about it today. I mean, I, I have been watching football. I'm older than, than all of you 
every single person that's been on this so far. Um, on the planet. <laughs> I don't know. Morley, Morley saying three years old and 92. That felt like a personal attack. But personally, I, I did not care for. But uh, I mean, <laughs> I, I was really negative got, one. So. Yeah. <laughs> Shut up, Justice. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, how do you boot justice out? Is that yeah? It? No, I was I was twelve, man. Um, but yeah, I mean, it was uh, it's it's. I said I've been writing about football for like nine to ten years or something. And at this point, I've learned a lot from him. I tweeted about this earlier today that this is like watching, studying the passing game, watching this like so much of what I know about the passing game and kind of was able to interpret from the passing game and all that came from watching him. And then the more I watch, the more you kind of dig in, like he's, he's just a master at so many things within the game. And I'm, I'm going to miss watching that. And that, that stinks. Um, but we also like, he was, he was not 27. He's not prime of his career. Like, you know, he's got a year or two left anyway. So it's kind of, kind of ready at this point, but yeah, it, it's been, it's been a weird day to have closure while also kind of look, looking back while trying to look forward at the same time. Yeah, it's well said. I tweeted this out earlier. It makes probably no sense. But um, I said, to some extent, I feel like I've been reading the same book for the past 30 years. It's one of the best books ever written. But even though I'm 99% sure the next book I'm going to read is probably worse, I'm just excited for something new. And it just feel it just feels like new. And I was talking to my friend about this. It was actually a Bears fan, which I, why I have a friend that's a Bears fan. I'm not entirely sure yet. But um, where I basically said, like, it's it's been like a constant state of competing at the insane highest level for, for basically 30 years, which came with three Super Bowls, two Super Bowl wins, seven MVPs, multitude of playoffs, some of the most gut-wrenching, heart-twisting, no human being should have to experience uh, as many of these playoff losses as we've had to experience uh, at times in those situations. Very, very, very few non-winning seasons, very few frustrations, few head coaches, all those sort of things through 30 years, but a constant state of you know competing, which I would not trade for anything. And I would gladly take another 30 years of that, but it's just like, there, there have been so many different journeys that other NFL fans have had to take mm -hmm. where it's either, you're, you know, you have these ebbs and flows or like, have we, have we experienced a top 10 draft pick? Uh, when was the last top 10 draft pick? Is that Hawk? Hawk or Raji, AJ right? Hawk, I guess. Raji? AJ Hawk. Yeah, I was going to say Raji. Raji yeah. So like Hawk was five. Like, I don't, I haven't experienced, not, not that I'm excited for it, but like, I don't think I've experienced the top five draft pick in my lifetime or like, at least but like there's different journeys that you take as a Packer fan and obviously winning and winning a Super Bowl is the best of those journeys. But like I said, it's almost just like a different chapter that I'm, whatever happens, I'm just intrigued to kind of see what's going to happen next. I don't know if that makes sense. Maybe I'm just an idiot. I think both of those things could be well, true. It, well, and one of the things I mean, this is a conversation I've had as well is the, the idea of like the whole the, because the argument that always comes up is 30 years and two Super Bowls, which well, I was alive for both the Super Bowls and they were awesome. And those mm -hmm. were like their memories of those I carry with me for forever. So like, yep. that's more than that's more than some franchises have cough, cough Vikings like that's like I don't that like I'm fine with with that. It would have been nice to have more. But the idea of I think there's so much more than the, obviously just winning Super Bowl, thankfully. Every single season, with the barring a couple, you go into it knowing we at least have a shot. It's going to be entertaining. Like the the ability to watch season after season of entertaining competitive football that didn't always end well. Like you said, those scars, man. I was a, I've I've been able to insulate myself from them somewhat. And now I just I'm numb, and so I I don't feel anything anymore, which is awesome. You guys got to try it, man. Uh, but but the the fact that like you've got okay, they didn't win this year. That sucks you've got a thousand, a thousand different things the, the, the during the, the week to week was enjoyable at the very least. Absolutely. You're not waking up every morning as like a Browns fan for multiple reasons at this point going, <laughs> this week's going to suck. And then you watch it anyway. Like that's terrible. And maybe we'll enter into that. Maybe that's this period. I have no idea. But the fact that we've had 30 years essentially of it's going to be somewhat enjoyable. And I know we're going to go into every single game and at least something interesting is going to happen. And we've got a right. chance every season. I mean, a lot of fan bases don't have that, have not had that. It's something that I, I definitely do not want to take for granted. Well, that's well said. I think we, we've had, you know, guys like Brett Favre and Aaron Rodgers, like not only, not only like winning uh, and having a chance every Sunday or not even, you know, having a, a playoff chance, a puncher's chance at a Super Bowl almost every single year, but going into every game being like, something spectacular could happen today. Something like some throw that I've never seen in the history of the NFL or like, like any of it could happen for the past 30 years. And like, there was just, 
there's so much about it from the wins to the the throws to the plays to the making insane plays with their feet to just all of it and end of an era doesn't that necessarily do it justice and it's not just one era right like you'd be closing the door on 30 years of hall of fame quarterbacks like that's, that's a hell of a run but it all of it has a, a huge weight to it and it feels very monumental today mm-hmm. Uh, we should probably wrap things up here. We're heading on about an hour here. And I, I want to, you know, especially Justice, I know you've been here the whole time I get out of here. But Justice, just kind of final thoughts on the day, final thoughts on Aaron Rodgers, the New York Jet. Um, Just last thing, like w- one thing I do hope, because we, we, uh, we were talking about this earlier about like giving Rodgers his flowers on the way out and stuff like that. I do kind of hope they get some sort of like conditional 2024 pick for him that is like based off of like how far they go in the playoffs or something like that so it would be nice to just like be able to like keep track of an afc team you know when, when right? packers aren't playing yeah exactly just keep tabs on them a little bit and you're rooting for them you're not rooting against them like you know mo- most most situations you want a team to tank but you can keep watching aaron Rodgers. you get a draft pick that adjusts to how far they go in the playoffs like that would be nice it would be kind of cool. I mean, not in its entirety, but like, it'd be kind of cool if like, let's just say the Packers got the Jets first round pick and then there was a conditional pick in 2024, but the condition could be anything from like, if the Jets win the Super Bowl, you get a first round pick to if the Jets lose or like only win four games, like the Packers actually owe them a pick. So like you have this like sliding scale of like, this could be anything depending. So like every Jets game is like, even if they're like, you know, four and eight at some point, like getting to that fifth win is like super important. <laughs> so that like Packers don't matter. Right? Exactly. So like, either way, when, when Favre was a jet and they got that conditional pick uh, in return, like it was so much fun. It, it, it was fun cheering for Favre as a jet in general, but like the fact that the better the jets did, the better that pick had the opportunity to be like, that was just an added bonus on top of it. Uh, Dusty, any final thoughts on anything today? No, nah, man. Like I said, it's it's uh it is it's weird. I, I mean, I say like it's closing the door to the next chapter, which it, it is, but it's still like I don't know, man. It, until like the trade is actually through, I'm still gonna be like I don't know, man. Like, uh, I, oh it's going God. to go through, but man, like I'm always I'm gonna be on pins and needles a little bit. What's up, Tom? Uh, What's going on, guys? But yeah, it's a uh, I don't know, man. I'm I'm very curious to see what happens next. I've watched enough of Jordan Love to be curious about what happens. <laughs> All ranges are on the table, man. If he comes out and just lights the world on fire, like I knew it. And then if he comes out and throws like six interceptions in the first like <laughs> six quarters, like I also knew that. So every <laughs> everything's on the table and I'm excited to see what happens next, man. <laughs> Tom freaking grassy. How the heck are you doing, man? I literally just hop off GPS and I just saw your DM. So I was like, oh, okay, I'll hop on. I literally just closed the browser for StreamYard and I was like, I'm just going to open another one. <laughs> This is amazing. We were just about to close shop, but now that you're here, I don't know how we could possibly oh, do okay, that. Okay, bye. See you later then. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, that's you. Tom Grassi's here. All right, thanks, guys. Bye. Yeah, see you guys later. Uh, Tom, your, your thoughts on today? Um, I'm really happy that I can sleep now because I legitimately haven't gotten a full night's sleep in about a month. Like, legitimately. Like, they, I made a stupid skit, like, last Saturday of, like, a Packers fan waiting for – Aaron Rodgers and like my hand is out of the shower like with the phone and stuff like even today I'm shampooing my hair gotta get in the scalp shampooing my hair and I'm literally like okay washing my hands and like sticking out of the shower and like okay it didn't happen yet like legitimately I've been doing that nonstop for about a month so there's a little relief just for I that. Feel that so much I feel that so much and like there are, of course there were like so many days that like I would have been immediately able to live stream and then you know today wasn't one of them but at least as soon as something happened I was at least aware of it and stuff but like man there was days where I'm like I like you said like I need to go take a shower and I'm not sure if like <laughs> of course it's gonna break I was I went to the Bucks game on, on last Thursday that. and I'm like I'm like oh my god this is for sure gonna break at, during the Bucks game and then it snowed so we had to stay overnight I'm just like this is a nightmare. It was, it's been crazy. This is my, it snowed here pretty heavily. And I had to like shovel three times yesterday. I like did my walkway, then ran inside and like checked my phone, <laughs> ran out, did like half my driveway, ran back inside and checked my phone because it's, it's one of those things that it, it, it requires almost like that level of insanity because it's such a franchise altering event. Like, it's not just like, Oh, like we got a long snapper, like, which we did. Like, also it's not a franchise like, altering event. <laughs> it's true. It's accurate, but it's, it's one of those things that we may never see anything like this ever again for the Packers. Like there might not be 
another Aaron Rodgers. That's going to be tough to get who's going to stay there for that amount of time, who is going to have that amount of impact on the franchise, and then is going to get traded. It's not just like retired. It's not just like, okay, he's declining a lot, so it kind of makes sense he's going to get traded. Like, that stuff doesn't happen, and we have seen it now twice in our lifetimes. Yeah, it's it's been absolutely crazy. And like you said, this is franchise-altering. Um, I'll just ask you, it, obviously, Justice or Dusty, if you need to bounce at any point, you know, clearly feel free to do so. But we'll go on a little bit more here just to, to talk the four of us if, if you guys want to stay. But um, your your um, you know, your thoughts on what's next for, for Green Bay and, uh, you know, wh- what, you know, kind of Green Bay needs to do from here to kind of make this transition into the Jordan Love era. I'm going to say this and I don't want anyone to get offended. We need to be the Bears this year. And I know, oh, I know what I just said sounds sacrilege, but what I mean by that is that last year, all the Bears cared about, and it wasn't even wins or losses, is Justin Fields our guy. That was their priority number one. Coming into this year, we basically have two seasons to figure that out, right? It's what do we have in our young talent because we have a lot of young talent. Are they any good? Are they going to take that second step? Is our defense going to live up to the promise that we were promised last year of like a top five, top 10 defensive unit? I don't think so either, but because nothing's changed, but that's neither here nor there. Um, And then of course you have Jordan Love. They have like a two-year runway because I don't think it's, unless he's like really bad, I don't know if it's like fair to gauge just one season. And plus it doesn't see, like he'll have, AJ Dillon, Aaron Jones, maybe Matt LaFleur will actually run the ball more. You know, there's there's those assets, probably not. Again, we're just going around in circles. But I think it's just figure out what you have and say, okay, we keep this and move forward. We don't keep this and we move forward. I think like, I know that's really simplified, but that's what Packer fans should feel going into this, in my opinion. Because I, I, I've talked about this and I, and I it's so hard to describe this without sounding like a total a-hole. But for 30 plus years, we have had the expectation with Favre and Rodgers, we're going to the Super Bowl every single year, right? That's been the expectation every single season, every single, except maybe for like 2008, right? That's, that's been the expectation. Now we don't have that. And I will say, like having that expectation is great. And I love the fact that we had two Hall of Fame quarterbacks that gave that to us for such a long amount of time. And I'm so grateful for that. Truly, truly, because it just makes it fun to be a fan, right? Because you don't want to see your team suck. You love the team. But now, like, there's a tiny bit of relief that it's kind of like a shift because I'm going into the season going, if Jordan Love is great, oh my God, I'm going to be the happiest person on this planet, right? And if he's not, then I'm like, okay, well, like, I didn't really have a lot of expectations going in. I don't think they're going to be contending for a Super Bowl this year. So that's okay too. And like, we'll figure out what we have. I just hope that going forward, the Packers adjust accordingly instead of repeating everything and just hoping things magically change. Like, like a, a adjustments, like, like I know that that's kind of a bad word, um, <laughs> but yes. And, and that's, someone was asking me that today. They were like, are you upset about Aaron Rodgers? Because like people, especially outside of green Bay are like, oh, well he's, he's washed. He's terrible. Now I don't think he's washed or terrible at all, but I think it's also time to move on from Aaron Rodgers because where Aaron Rodgers is in his career, where I still, he think, I think he could play at a really high level. That's Agreed. not where the Packers are. After seeing last season, and we might see jumps from like Christian Watson, Romeo Dobbs, right? They might actually decide to play Devontae Wyatt for a hot second. That would all be great. And they could take big jumps and maybe we can make the playoffs and stuff. But I'm looking at teams like the Chiefs. I'm looking at like even the 49ers when they have a quarterback. Like (laughs) it's going to be really tough to compete against them. And nothing has changed from last year to this year. So I think instead of just running it back again with Aaron Rodgers, it's kind of doing us a disservice because. I don't want to say we know how it's going to end because anything could happen, but it seems like we're just kind of hitting our head against the wall and not maximizing what we could and really finding out, okay, let's see the development of our young players, which should be the priority this season. Yeah, that's well said. I want to go around really quick. Uh, Does Green Bay now clearly pick up the fifth-year option on Jordan Love, Justice? 100%. The franchise tag is higher than that, so – I mean, if, if you think that this is going to be your guy and this is the guy that you shipped out Aaron Rodgers for, I mean, he he better be worth that fifth that fifth uh, fifth year option for like a what is it like a twenty million dollar discount 20 million, yeah. compared compared to the uh, franchise tag. So yeah, I think it's thumbs up for me, Dusty. 
Yeah, absolute no brainer. I mean, this was if there was ever a question before Rogers is out the door, I it'd be so ridiculous. Like, we'll see you later, Rogers. Also, we're not picking up the fifth <laughs> round. Sure. I was thinking the same thing as I was. What are we doing? What are we doing? Uh, this would be tremendous. Uh, but yeah, no, they I think they absolutely have to. Tommy, I'm assuming you're the same thing. Yeah, I mean, you have people were like, oh, well, now you can go get Lamar, right? If you get a first round pick, I was like, no, 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 no. <laughs> like, listen, Lamar Jackson's fun, right? But no, like, you literally. And I love the, I don't know if you guys heard this or maybe it was just like within the franchise, like I want to say it was the second year of Jordan Love. So it was like 2021 ish. There was like a lot of chatter of like, he's not, he's not, he's not good. Like he's not developing the way that he should. Like there was a lot of it. And I was hearing it from people that shouldn't know about that. And I was like, oh, that's, that's like not a great sign. But then that changed. There was a shift that happened. And I think it's because you bring in some coaches that maybe are really good at their job. Um, but I think now, like the fact that Green Bay has even shifted their tone about how they talk about love. And I think, honestly, that's even happened within the past two months. Look at Goody going to talk at the end of January and him saying, yeah, you know, Jordan Love, but he hasn't played a full season. You know, he hasn't played a full season. You never know what's going to happen, you know, and all these things. But now it's like, nope, he's ready to play. At that combine, that's when Aaron was talking about the, the shift in tone. I even did a, a video about that because I was like, this is different. It is very, very different. And now yeah. he's just like, well, we got to see if it works out for both sides. But the way that he praised Jordan Love, he's like, nope, he is ready to go. He's a starting QB. The next thing for him to do in his progression is to play. So, yeah, no, they're going to pick up his fifth-year option because I don't know what else you do. Well, I was I was at camp. Well, obviously, in 2020, when he was drafted, they didn't have the mini camps, OT, all, all the COVID stuff, right? And then they had the the closed training camp or whatever, but Jordan was the three behind Boyle. You didn't get to see all that much of him. And then 2021 comes back, and like um, that's when the whole Rogers situation was sort of happening. And so like Jordan got a bunch of reps and stuff. It was so bad. Like the it, from a media standpoint, I can tell you because like I was watching all of like the media as like they were tweeting stuff out <laughs> to be like. All right, how harsh are they going to be on this kid? Because I was like, he wasn't put in a great position necessarily. And like, um, he, he was, uh, this was his first, you know, mini camps he was going through first OTAs going through, you've got the whole Roger situation going on. So like, he wasn't put exactly put in like the best scenario, but it was like his feet were so crazy in the pocket. And like his, it was like a panic trying to go through progression and play after play after play was a panic check down to the side, like every single one. And then I remember it very clearly because there was one day, I don't know if you guys remember this, but there was a day in 2021. And I, I want to say it was mini camps or uh, mini camps or training. Where he just went off. And like, everyone was like, Oh my God, he was, he was doing the belt. He, that was the one day I missed. That was the one day that I missed was that day. And I was like, you've got to be kidding me. So apparently, you know, like the one, but like all the other days was just like, dude, can this guy leg legitimately throw it down the field? Um, I think it was Bortles. I think it was Bortles. I forget who it was, but I think it was Bortles who like came in one day and like immediately just like ripped like a 40 yarder on a rope down the field, which seems very weird because he's Blake Bortles, but like we had literally not seen a throw like plus 15 yards down the field in like days of camp uh, or b before that, because Jordan was just checking it down and every, but then 2022 goes on to your point about coaches, Tom, like, or I, I think Tom Clements has a huge, huge impact on what he did. And I think he just ultimately takes a, a jump and a step, which was very similar to what happened to Aaron as well. It was, um, it was so much fun to see just him take that command and be more, um, you know, you're not as happy with his feet. Like you could just tell the time, effort, energy work that he put in. It was, it was a night and day difference. And I think it's interesting. Tom Clements actually stuck on this roster, That's right? Awesome. I mean, he's kind of Rogers, guy. And there was even rumors. I know when I was down in Indianapolis, a lot of people, not necessarily rumors, but a lot of people were asking because, you know, Green Bay was one of the, the last teams to finalize their coaching staff, right? And they hadn't even announced what was it like Greg Williams? It took them like, like a month weeks. to an, yeah, it took them like a month to announce that they had a new cornerbacks coach. And a lot of people were wondering down there at the combine, and they were like, "Is it because Tom Clements is conditional upon Rogers' return? Is that is that the situation that's happening?" And apparently not. I mean, I mean, who knows? Maybe it changes in a week or something like that. But Tom Clements, it seems like he's two of two on developing these quarterbacks. So keep him around as long as you can.
And and credit to Aaron there too, right? Because when Aaron, like it was reported that Aaron like was asked, like, who would you want kind of as quarterbacks coach? And Aaron said right away, like, not just for me, but he thought that Tom would be amazing for Jordan as well. And I do think that there's a world that like, is there anything left for Tom to coach Aaron at this point? Like Aaron could probably coach the entire Tom Clement system. And like, I'm sure he would like that relationship in New York or whatever, but like Tom has an insane amount of value for Jordan love at this point. And like, like I said, love or Rogers could run the Tom Clements uh, like coaching camp at this point. Like, I, I just, it made so much sense. And I'm so happy it happened that way. The jets cool. already have a QB coach, by the way, I, I did. I did check on that when, the, when those rumors were flying also, Nice of Aaron to have a wish list for a quarterback coach. <laughs> he <laughs> demands. He had demands. Uh, I think you so, say something? Yeah, to that point, too, like, I also, like, really don't like that narrative of, like, well, we should have just traded Aaron last year because the guy is coming off back-to-back MVP seasons, which, and, and I know you all know this, too, the Green Bay Packers are – petrified and i'm using that word very specifically petrified of bad pr they hate it like they like when that roger st- i was in the building when the roger stuff was going down and i have never ever felt a level of anxiety in that building than i did like the amount of because i talked to mark murray just about every year at this point and the amount of well what are you going to ask him like what are you guys going to talk do you have like a list of i was like this has never happened and i've been doing this since 2016 now like this has never ever happened there was like a joke made and he's like, is it really clear that it's a joke? Like it was like that much overboard because they didn't want to upset Aaron. They wanted to make sure like they were winning that because pe- they were losing it. They were on hundred, especially when Schefter, that was like two years ago now, right? When Schefter like tweeted right around the draft and it was like, oh, it's all the Packers. Like they had a whole wave of really, really bad PR. And it's funny because he brought that up again and talking about like the Jordy Nelsons of the world, the Clay Matthews of the world and like how now they kind of just get unceremoniously thrown out. Um, and he brought that back to himself, a little jab at the uh, organization there. But my point is that he's a back-to-back MVP. And as we just talked about, Jordan Love did not look good. So yeah, is the contract not great? Absolutely. I can completely understand why they did it though, because the PR move that it would have looked like if you trade Aaron Rodgers after getting back to where you just were after two MVP seasons, and you go to a guy who clearly wasn't ready it was not going to be a good time. So like, I get it. It wasn't ideal, but I 100% understand the move. I said at this time last year that I like would have traded him. And that I made all the same points at the time, even, even though that that's probably the direction, like it's not fantasy football. It's not Madden. There's a real yeah. life organization you have to run. There's a real life person behind the face mask and the number 12 on the Jersey. Like there is so much that goes into that and coming off of back-to-back MVPs to trade that guy you know, yeah, you know what? Draft picks are fun and it's fun stuff for us to talk about, but it's it's a real life organization that you have to run. And uh, even if I think it was like the best thing at the time and getting a crap ton of picks from the Broncos probably would have kickstarted your next, um, you know, potential window to, to, you know, win a championship. Like it's, it's just not that easy. And as we were talking about earlier, you know, with justice is that like these GMs and coaches, their, their livelihoods are on the line and tied to who's ever most often at your quarterback position and going to an unknown at that point, not what a lot of people want to do in that situation. I mean, look at Denver, like right now that Russell Wilson trade that everyone was praising and saying that was the greatest thing. Seahawks, ESPN's like, oh, Seahawks, they get a D plus, right? And the, the Broncos again, an A plus, 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 they, they fleeced them, they destroyed them. It's a very different change of tone now. And now the GM, right? Sean Payton is reporting right to the owner. Like it's kind of like overstepping him. It's not a good look. And now it's tied to that. And with Goody, you know, this is one of the biggest moves he's ever going to make drafting Jordan Love. Like that's going to be his legacy. So if he sucks, it's it's not going to be ideal. But then again, you know, like it's always forgotten about of like the Keyshawn Nixons of the world, the Devondre Campbells of the world, like that he finds these diamonds in the rough, the Rasul Douglases of the world. So like it's it's a mixed bag because I see right now people are finger pointing at Aaron, they're finger pointing at the organization. And it's like, it's all, I think you might have tweeted that out, Andy, right? Like it's it's all of it. It's all of it, everything everywhere, all at once. Shout out, great movie. Like it, it's all of that happening. So it, there, there's nuance in here instead of just being like, oh, nope, should have done that. Organization's dumb for doing it or not doing it. 
everyone's always mad at everyone all the time is the right. like, we have to we have to always be upset with stuff and like sometimes it's just business and crappy things happen and I'm sure everyone probably wishes things went a little bit different could have changed things like justice i think said it right at the beginning like i don't think anyone acted like an idiot in the entire situation like it's these things are very very hard very very difficult and there's no easy way to, to always make these decisions and it's just life and like i feel like we um we never allow for gray area that often of just like sometimes like especially when rogers has been with the franchise as long as he has like sometimes relationships just get weird after a while like that just is what that's just life and there doesn't always have to be a bad guy in the situation i think to aaron's credit i think he said something you know very similar now he got, he got a couple of his aaron rogers isms in during the course of the interview but overall he could have he could have gone much more scorched earth and just didn't and yeah i i guess i think he's understood that there doesn't have to be a villain in this story and i think that if we can keep it that way that'd be freaking awesome Really quick, Dusty, you have an idea on trade comp for for Rodgers? Uh, three first round picks. Uh, no, I mean I don't. Um, I mean honestly, yeah. at this point, uh, <laughs> I mean a first round pick, a first round pick this year. I don't know second or second round next year, and maybe a conditional thrown in at this point. Like I'd be happy with. I I was really going for two first round picks at a certain point. I just don't think that's happening anymore. So I'm going like a. I don't know. We'll do a, a first, a second, uh, conditional fourth is kind of my my thought at the moment, which I don't know. Doesn't feel doesn't feel great. But also there's the contract stuff, and maybe he only plays one more year. And I think I would take that right now. I mean he's it, 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 take anything, right? Take a bag of chips right now. Like he's he's leaving. Get what you can at this point. But that's that's kind of what I'm that's what I'm hoping for. Tom, what what kind of chips would you like to see included in the deal? <laughs> Salt and vinegar. Um, I think it's so funny too because like you asked me three weeks ago i was like the packers have no leverage whatsoever like not like not even a little bit it's like they're trying to get rid of this bad contract maybe they could take on more of the contract so they can get more draft capital like that would be good but <laughs> i'm that vindictive that i'm like if you are the packers like right now as, as someone who lives in new york and my neighbor literally is a jets fan if this trade doesn't happen for whatever, they will burn MetLife to the ground. <laughs> Less players will get injured than actually playing on their turf, but they will burn it to the ground. So I think it, because you know, like Jimmy G, that option's out the window. Derek Carr, that option's out the window. What do you have, Lamar? Like or Taylor Heineke's gone. Heine yeah, exactly. Like Jacoby, <laughs> Jacoby Brissett. Brissett got signed a couple hours ago. He's got, yeah. like, he's got, yeah. he's got he's Carson got Wentz now. at this point, right? To be fair, I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure you can still trade for Taylor Heineke if you really want to go. <laughs> They're like, we have a 13th overall pick. We're gonna yeah. we're just gonna throw you at that. But the my point is that I don't think it's I don't think the Packers are going to get as fleeced as people thought a few weeks ago. Because I think that now there is a good amount of leverage. Because for the Packers, it's like you just said, Dusty, you'll take a bag of chips, right? Because he's leaving. It's definitely happening. What is the worst case scenario for the Packers? Rogers retires? Okay, bye. Then we get nothing. You know what I mean? Like, it, but the Packers are willing to do that because they're moving on to Jordan Love. They have nothing to lose. The Jets, oh boy, they got they got some things to lose because they have people coming out at the end of January saying we are aggressively going after a veteran QB. All of this has happened for a month and a half. Everybody flew out there, and now Roger said, "I'm planning on going to the Jets." They got to get a deal done. So. All the pre yeah, they get Matt Ryan exactly. Can you imagine um, if all of a sudden, as we're doing this, like Ian just tweets out that the Jets have signed Matt Ryan instead? Woody like, Johnson's just like flipping off everybody. He's like, you know what? We're getting yeah. him. We're gonna tape the ball to his hands. But like, my point is that I think a the thirteenth overall pick I'd be happy with, and then like do a conditional if he plays another year next year. You know, maybe it can move up to like a third or a second or something. I'd be content with that. I think everyone in the chat's gonna like Dusty and Tom more than they liked me and Justice when we were more in like the second round pick <laughs> plus a conditional maybe. Um, so we'll see. I think it's gonna be really interesting. Like if you told me they got like a first and a third or a first and a conditional, I wouldn't be shocked. If you told me they got like a, I, I think if you told me they got a third, I wouldn't be shocked either. Like I think there's an actual range here, and I do I do think that I don't know. It's just gonna be super interesting. Uh, it's gonna be super interesting. Uh, Justice, final thoughts before we get out of here, and uh, where can we find your work? Uh, I'm out of thoughts now. You can find my work at acmepackingcompany.com, uh, Twitter at J U M O S Q. That's pretty much it. Appreciate you, man. Dusty, where can we find you? Any final thoughts? Ah, uh, no real final thoughts. No, I'm sure I'll have thoughts at some point. Right now, I'm, I'm I think I'm drained at the moment, like, like, uh, Justice. I believe I am out of thoughts, but you can find me over on Twitter at Dusty Evely. 
I appreciate you, man. Tom, appreciate you coming at the end. Where can we, well, we all know where to find you, but uh, where can we find you? And what any of the final, I don't thoughts? have any social media. I don't do anything online. So just, just don't, just don't, just don't find me. Just don't, don't, don't find Tom. I uh, am I really, going to consume so many things this evening now that I can relax. Like that, that's where, that's where my head's at going into this evening. Cause now I can kind of relax a little bit. So is there, is there like a new hat that gets added to the wall now that a quarterback is gone? Like, is there some like passing of the, like, is there some sort of grassy tradition that needs to take place I, here? I burn an old hat just to signal to the neighbors that there's a change of guard. <laughs> so change guard. we do, it's very traditional here. So Love it. I, I really appreciate all of you for being here. I appreciate Jacob Morley for stopping by uh, for a second as well. Um, make sure to follow all their work. You can follow me on Twitter at Andy Herman NFL. You can follow the podcast at Back at a Podcast. Um, I'll have a video right up here for you tomorrow morning again, 5 a.m. bright and early. Uh, so make sure to check that out. But uh, as always, until next time, and as always, go Paco.